And now we pick it up at verse 20. It says, Many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, Oh, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Did you hear that? He who believes, he whoever, let me start again. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that. You are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come, and he's calling for you. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. And then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, following her, saying, she is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now they have very good reason for saying that. They know of Jesus' ministry for at least a year, probably long before that. And they had seen Jesus heal many who were sick and sick unto death. And so they're saying, boy, if you had been here, Lord... My brother would not have died. And I wonder what was in their heart at that moment. Were they a little angry at the Lord? Were they a little disappointed that he didn't come? Or were they just acknowledging that in, 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 in this way, that, well, Lord, we know that if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I don't know. But they both say the same thing. They know that there is life and power in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, that Lazarus would not have died if Jesus had been there. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And then next comes the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he has been dead for four days. And my favorite King James, original King James says, Lord, he stinketh. Jesus said to him, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Can you imagine being there and seeing this? Can you imagine being one of the mourners, weeping? And the word there for weeping is sobbing and wailing. If you've ever been to, seen on TV, a funeral service for those in the Middle East, whether of Jewish or, or uh, Arab descent, and the mourners are wailing. You know, we go into a funeral home and it's quiet. It's not what happens in the Middle East. They wail 
and moan. And in fact, for people who didn't have a lot of friends around who could come to a funeral, in those days you could hire mourners. They were professional mourners who would come in and weep and wail for you because of the loss. Can you imagine that? And that changes from that to... You see what... I imagine most people were speechless at first. And then you want to talk about a Pentecostal charismatic whoop de doo I got to tell you, people had to have been jumping up and down and praising God. I would have been. I've done a couple funerals, more than a couple. And if the one even before being buried had gotten up out of the casket because Jesus raised him from the dead, I'd be praising God. Be amazing time. An amazing time. Now I have a question for you. Why did Jesus weep? Why did Jesus weep? Didn't he know he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead? Well, of course he did. Of course he did. He knew he would raise him from the dead. The word that is used to describe Mary and Martha and the others weeping is the Greek word kaleo. It means to sob, to wail aloud. But the word that's used for Jesus weeping when it says Jesus wept is a word that's only used in that phrase in the Greek. Totally different word, dakruo. And it means to shed tears silently. But it also says, as we read it from the New King James, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And these are very interesting words to me. The word that's translated groaned in the spirit literally means to snort with anger. It means to have indignation. It's used sometimes to say to blame or to sigh with chagrin or to sternly enjoin, to be deeply moved. It's kind of like, oh. that's what the word means. Trouble deep in spirit. Oh. And when it says he was troubled, it means to stir or to agitate, to be deeply troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. So here's Jesus, and he looks upon this scene where his, his friend Lazarus is dead. And his friends, Mary and Martha, are weeping because of the loss of their brother. And I believe that the reason that Jesus wept and the reason that Jesus was just, oh, I have to admit I did that sometimes when my kids were young. I kind of sounded like a bear sometimes when they would do something and I would just kind of go, Ugh. I do that about myself a lot now. I do something stupid and I just go, Ugh. and that's kind of what the attitude that Jesus has right here. Why? Because death was never God's plan. Death was not God's plan. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had access to the tree of life. And they were expelled from the garden, it says, because God said, lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever, meaning live forever in this sinful condition. They had full access to it before. There was only one tree they could not eat the fruit of. That was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they would remain innocent, that they would remain pure and sinless. And once they had received that, God said, I need to separate them now from eternity in a sinful state. And now the ultimate plan of Jesus must come into place. But death was not God's original intention. 